Hey everybody, welcome to the seventh episode of PeopleSoft interview series by PeopleSoft channel. In this episode, we are going to study one of the most frequently asked interview questions about application engine program. And the question states, how can we implement a dynamic call section in application engine program? This question is most frequently asked questions in the technical interviews of PeopleSoft when the panel wants to know your knowledge about application engine. So to study this question, we will go through a small demo have to understand what is section, what is call section, what is dynamic call section, and how do we implement one. I hope you are excited to learn. This is Max, and without further delay, Let's get into Application Designer. So let's consider this Application Engine program. This program has three sections. The default main section, next section 1, and then section 2. If you see, each section has set of steps and actions to perform some work as part of this program. So in the main section, we have people code to display some messages. In section one, we have in step one, people code to display some messages. And this is the SQL action where the actual work is going on. So what is the purpose of this application engine program? Well, we have this table called as PC employee table with couple of employees in it and their effective status. So the purpose of this application engine program is to update the effective status for these employees from inactive to active. And that action is happening inside this particular SQL action, which is present in section one. So again, we have step two in the same section with some messages. And then we have section two with people code and some messages. Now, before we talk about dynamic call section, let's understand what is a regular call section or static call section. By default, we have main section in the application engine program and the actual work is happening inside section one. So once we are inside the main section, we must call section one in order to let this action execute. Otherwise, the program will only execute the main section. Hence, to execute section one from main, we need a call section action. So in order to execute this, let's go to the last action in main section and say from here, we want to call section one. So let's right click on this. Let's say insert action. Select the action type as call section. And then once we select call section, we need to provide two parameters. The first one is section name. So let's select section one. And the second parameter is the program ID. That means the application engine program name. By default, it says current. That means you are calling this action, which is present in the same application engine program but you can also call the section from some another application engine program. So we will leave this as it is. Let's save the application engine. Let's test our changes by running the application engine program. So right now I am inside the system process requests. So let's find our application engine. And this is the application engine program. So let's run it. So the process is successful and it is also posted. So let's go to details. Let's check the message logs. And we can see we have received messages from main section as well as from section one. And we did not receive any message from section two from this people code because we only call section one. And from section one, we did not do anything, so the program ended. Let's check in the SQL developer. 
let's run a select query against this table to see if the changes are completed. And as expected, all of the employees have been activated. Now, let's go to view log trace and let's check this application engine trace file. And here you can clearly see that we started with main section and we completed the step one by calling the section, which is the section one, as we have provided in this call section action. And then we went to section one, step one, and here we executed the SQL and that's it, the application engine complete. Now, we also have section two with people code action, which says no inactive employees found application engine completed. That means that right now, if you see, we have all the employees activated in this table. So to display this message and to avoid this execution of section one, we created section two with message that section one is not executed because there is no inactive employee found and the AEP is completed. However, we can call only one section from here. We will either call section one or we will call section two. That is using the regular call section. What if we want a scenario that based upon certain conditions, either section one should be called from here or section two will be called from here. So this kind of functionality means we need a dynamic decision on which section to call from this particular state. So that, my friend, is called as dynamic call section. In static call section, we were very clear about which section to call and we provided this parameter. However, from dynamic call section, we can write a logic and based upon that logic, the system will decide which of these two sections to call. So let's now work towards creating a dynamic call section. The first thing we will do is let's select this checkbox which says dynamic. Earlier we did not select this because ours was a static call section. But now let's select this. And as soon as we do this, remember the section name is gone. Now, next step involves creating a state record for our application engine program. So let's create a new record. And for this state record, let's provide the two important fields. First one will be process instance, which will store the process instance of your current application engine program. And the second one is the A underscore section, which is the section field to store the section name of the AEP. And in the record type, as this is going to be a state record, we will select the type as direct work record. Now, save the table. As this is going to be a state record, the record name must end with underscore AED. So let's click on OK. Let's insert this record into a project. Now, next is we need to link this state record with our application engine. So let's go to application engine and let's select the properties. Here on the state record tab, let's search for the state record that we have created. Click on get list and then we have this record name present here. Click on add. And now this is going to be a state record for our application engine program. I have unchecked the previous one because that is no longer required. And this is going to be our state record. Click on OK and save the changes to application engine. Now we have this people code program before call section. So let's enter into the people code program. Here we have message box to display some messages. Here we have added some people code program logic 
which will help the system to determine which section to call. We have taken employee count as a number variable and then we are executing a select statement which will count the number of employees having current status as inactive. Now, based upon the employee count, we will say if the employee count is greater than zero, that means there is at least one employee whose employee status is inactive, we will let the system execute section one. Otherwise, we will let the section call section two. And what is this? This is nothing but the state record that we have created. And this is nothing but the section name. As you can see, we are assigning these section values to this particular field in the state record. Now, let's save the program and then let's check what is the current status. So, let me run a select statement against this particular table. And if you see, as of now, all the employees are having effective status as active. So let's test by running the application engine program. So the program is completed. Let's go to details. Let's go to view log trace first. And then in the AED, we can see that started with main section step one. Then we move to main section step one. Here we call section two instead of section one. And finally, we completed the application engine program after we completed section two, step one. If we check the messages, we can see that from main section, we directly move to section two. Now, why this happened is because our system performed a dynamic call section and call section two. Now let's test in some other way. So I'm adding this new employee with the employee status as inactive. Let me execute this insert SQL. And now if we run the select SQL, we have at least one employee whose current status is inactive. Now what will happen if we rerun the application engine program? So let's test this. So the process is executing. Let's wait for the process to complete. Process is successful and posted. Let's go to details and let's check the message log. Here, as expected, we have, we can see that section one was executed instead of section two. And we can verify this in the AET logs that our system started with main section and then it called section one to execute the SQL instead of calling section two. So that's how we can implement the dynamic call section in application engine program. Thank you so much guys for watching this episode. If you found this helpful, then please let us know so that we will bring more interview preparation episodes for people. So thank you.